Midjourney has released a brand new version, Midjourney version 6, and this one is trained from the ground up and it could do things version 5 was not able to do at all, like create text. And it's currently inside of Discord, so they're supposed to have a website soon, and that website is still only available to select few. So right now, we still need to use Discord to use Midjourney. If you're watching this and you're brand new to Midjourney, I have a different video for you that shows you how to use Midjourney from scratch. This is for just Midjourney 6. So I'm gonna show you the difference between five and six. It has a bunch of new options, including a different way for prompting that I'm gonna cover in this video. And I'll show you comparisons between the last version of Midjourney, which was 5.2, and this new version, version six. Okay, first to use version six, again, go to Midjourney. I'm using the Midjourney bot here. And I just have to type in settings and press enter. And this dropdown right here, click this and then choose V6. And all the other version of Midjourney are always available. If you don't wanna choose the model here, by the way, you could put dash dash V space six at the end of any prompt that you give Midjourney and it will use six. So if you don't wanna change it, but you could always change it with the settings. So I recommend using six here if you wanna follow along with me. Okay, let me show you a few different examples. I've been using it probably for the last seven hours here to show you a bunch of different examples, but this one, it does these characters, these popular characters, like this is a Mario Brother character. Let me show you Super Mario Brothers in a busy New York street. Well, I didn't get Luigi, but I got Mario and it's extremely detailed, very interesting results here. I got a couple of different versions of Darth Vader. One time I specifically asked for Darth Vader, photograph of Darth Vader using halftones and vibrant colors to capture their energy here. And I got this one. But look at this interesting prompt. Craft a series of screen printed artwork featuring iconic pop culture symbols. Again, in that same tone. And I got a better version this time. This is another one I got from that same exact prompt in the same exact grid. But one of the things version six is extremely good at is portraits and human faces. So this one is from version 5.2. So I took this same prompt and look at the details in the version six that I got. The details here, I mean, if I zoom in, this is incredible amount of detail here in the face. So if you look at this prompt here, I'm not gonna read the whole prompt, but I use this kind of style where it was this Kodak film style. And I said old man, so it gave me an old man. But when I kept it open and I said subject, it gave me this female character here. And again, look at the details here. This is really getting incredible with version six. Looking at version five, when you zoom in, the details were nowhere near this. Now, two different things when it comes to prompting version six that are completely different from version five. One of them is at the end of your prompt before we used to have what they call junk words. So photographic style or 4K or 8K. Now they're telling us not to use any of that and just leave it open. So if you look at the end of the prompt, it just has these two options that it creates here automatically. So I no longer put you know, 4K or cinematic or things like that. And it actually did a good job without me having to do that. And with version six, when you create with version six, you have these four boxes underneath once you up res any one image and you could upscale subtle or upscale creative. The creative really smooths things out. So I'll show you a couple of examples here. Here's the regular non upscale version and here is the creative upscaled version. So you could see the details have really popped in this upscale version with the creative upscale and you could still very subtle or very strong here. So this is gonna give you the pop up to refine a little bit your prompt and then submit the job one more time. So we've had that before. Now all the other options we have with version five, which we could still access, like the in-painting options where you could vary separate regions of your image or the expansion and all those things we have in version five that I covered in the version five video, those are not available yet in version six. So hopefully those are gonna roll out. And with version six, it's got really good at getting the colors right. So right here, Victorian era female character, I have that here in her 30s, mm, that's not quite good. Wearing pink outfit, got that right. With a blue robot, and he got that right. But look at how many attempts it took me to get that. I probably rolled this 10 different times. A Lot of different times, it kind of created this creepy robot that was just stuck to the person. So it's not quite perfect. So I've seen a lot of videos about V6 so far on the first day of release, 
and people were talking about how it was incredible and it was getting it right, but it was highly edited. So I'm showing you some of the good ones here, but there's plenty of bad ones. Let me show you a few. Right here, I put VHS tape of the movie Titanic and I got that. Okay, not great. I don't know what this is, but it's definitely not a VHS tape. And when it comes to creating text, here's an example. So I tried to create a movie poster for a movie called Legacy. Did a good job with the text. But then when I tried to get the text to really be bigger, I said, give it the word Legacy. And as long as you put in quotation mark what you want as text, it will try to do that. But I said in bold, large font. Legacy, tiny, legacy, tiny, legacy, misspelled. Again, legacy, misspelled, and tiny. So again, I didn't get what I wanted. I tried again, a large treasure chest covering spider webs in a dark cave. Sign reads, do not open. Let's see what we got here. Okay, do not open. We got that. So we got it one time. Where is the sign here? Nowhere here. This one, it just says do open. Maybe the do not is covered here. And we didn't get it over here. So I re-rolled again. Again, typo. Mm, okay, that's okay. Typo. Do not open. Nope. Two T's. Okay, let's try a third time. Not open. Do. Oh, it appeared over here. Nope. Did nothing there. Missed the N. Okay, so you get the point. I'm not going to try 10 different times to get the text right. It said as long as you put it in quotation mark, it's going to do a good job. But I might as well just use Photoshop to add text like I've been doing with Midjourney images. Dolly is still beating Midjourney when it comes to text by a mile. But again, I'm using this Midjourney alpha version of 6. This is even before beta, so it's not quite there yet with text. Now, in this one, a box of chocolate with the text yum yum. I did not specify where I want the text just to see what kind of job it wants to do here. And it put it right on the chocolate here. So it spelled it right. It has some gibberish underneath it, but it did a good job. And in this version of it, it put it right on the chocolate and it did okay. It's not quite there yet if you really zoom in, but it's not bad. And let me show you this last one. This is one of my favorite images we have out of Mid Journey 5.2. Photograph capturing an athlete from low angle, emphasizing their movement. Gender is not specific. Anything they're wearing is not specific, right? Let's see what we got here. Okay, same prompt inside of V6 and we got the hands wrong. Look at this hand over here. Look at this hand missing a finger. Okay, not too bad otherwise, but it's still, I'm not getting perfect hands every single time. It is far better though when it comes to hands from all the prompts I've given it but I wanted to show you one where it did a bad job. And this entire prompt book that I've been referencing is part of our mid-journey course on our e-learning platform, Skill Leap. So that's a bundle of courses basically for one subscription price. So mid-journey is one of our courses, Stable Diffusion, Dolly 3, we have courses on all the creative tools and ChatGPT2. But this one we're upgrading also to version six. So anything that needs to be changed, some of the prompting and some of the ways you actually typing some of those styles need to be changed with version six, just need to be more clear and more simplified. You don't need a long prompt really these days with version six, but as soon as the website comes out, we'll upgrade the whole mid journey course for mid journey V6 with the web access, which most people don't have access to, but it is out there is coming very soon. So I'll put a link in the description to Skill Leap. So that'll give you access to mid journey course and all our other AI courses. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you on the next one.